So here's a new function for you. It's called the square root function. And if we graph it, it looks something like this. That's a bit of a funny looking graph. And if we ever want to know why a graph looks the way it does, we can always make a table of x and y values. So we can pick a couple of x values, maybe randomly or somewhat randomly. I'll pick nice ones. And we plug those x values into the function to see what our y value is. So if we plug x equals 0 into our function, f of 0 is the square root of 0, which is just 0. So we have a point, 0, 0, that happens to be right there at the origin. If we plug in x equals 1, we get the square root of 1, which is just 1. So we have the point 1, 1. Okay, not so interesting so far, but if we plug in x equals 4, Four, our function gives us the square root of 4, which is 2, which is why I picked 4 in the first place. And we have the point 4, 2 right there. And we could continue with other uh, perfect squares. If we plug in x equals 9, we get the square root of 9, which is 3. So we also have the point 9, 3 on this graph somewhere over here. Well, why does this graph only live over here in the positive x arena? What if we tried to plug in x equals negative 1? Well, you'll notice if you try to plug in x equals negative 1, you get the square root of negative 1, which is not real. It's not a real number, so it doesn't show up on this graph. So this function only exists for x values that are greater than or equal to zero. In other words, the domain of this graph is all x values that are greater than or equal to zero. With interval notation, that looks like this. In set notation, that's all x values such that x is greater than or equal to zero. You'll also notice that the range is the exact same thing, all y values such that y is greater than or equal to zero. Now with any function, we know that we can do things to it. We can shift shift it around, up and down, left and right. This minus three represents a shift down three. This x plus two here gives us a shift of left two units. So the shift of left two units and down three units is gonna make our square root function start right here at the point negative two, negative three. Just like a regular square root function now, it's gonna go up one and over one, and it's going to curve kind of like that. So we have a basic idea of what this graph looks like. If we want a little bit more detail, we could start asking questions like what is the y-intercept? And we know that to find a y-intercept, we can always just plug in x equals zero, replace x with zero in the function, you get the square root of two minus three. Now, I don't know what that number is, it's an irrational number, but if we plug it into our calculator, we get something like negative 1.59. So about negative one and a half, it looks like we got pretty close on our graph to that value. Then we can ask the question, what is the x-intercept? We replace y with zero. In other words, we make the function value zero. And look what we're left with. This looks like a radical equation. You can go back and review the video about solving radical equations. But the main point is you want to get the square root by itself, in this case, by adding three to both sides. Now that we have the radical by itself, we can square both sides of the equation. That cancels the square root on the right and leaves us with a nine on the left. And we can add two to both sides, in this case, to solve for x. So the x-intercept is going to be 11, zero, which is way over here on the graph, and you can kind of see that this square root function will, I guess, approach somewhere over here, I'm going to hit the point 11, 0. Then we might be curious as to say uh, when this function will actually reach, say, the value 4. It's going to be way over here somewhere. So we might ask the question, where is the function value equal to 4? Well, there's our function right there. I just copied it down, and we're going to set that function value equal to 4. And again, we have a radical equation to solve. We can add 3 to both sides to get the square root by itself. We can now square both sides. Again, that gets rid of the square root on the right, and that squares the value on the left. We can subtract 2. We get x equals 47. That means on our graph of this square root, the function doesn't reach the y value of 4 until it reaches an x value of 47. So it's way over here somewhere. Okay. Okay, I guess that's all I have for you in this video. We'll do more in class. I uh, will see you there.